Okay, it's your guy Insomniac. Today we're talking coffee, but uh, we are sitting here with the arch nemesis for a lot of coffee snobs, and that is the drip coffee maker. But that is the topic of discussion today, because ahead of time, for anybody whose head is about to explode because there is a drip coffee maker here on the table, I absolutely agree that there are better and more flavorful methods for making coffee, but this is a video for people who either A, just have a drip coffee maker and really don't want to get deeper into coffee, but still want to enjoy a cup, and B, another group of people that I think will find this video useful is people that are making coffee for guests, company, coming over, etc. Again, if you have a bunch of coffee snobs coming over, you're going to want to use a different method. But if you have six or seven people over, you're playing cards, you just got done with dinner, or whatever the case may be, they want good coffee, and you don't want to serve them something that tastes like meth head Tammy served it up at the coffee stop at 3 a.m., well, this is a good way to make a large quantity of coffee, because that is one good thing that drip coffee makers are good for, but have it be a better quality cup of coffee. So before I get into the tips and tricks as to how to make a better cup of coffee with a drip coffee maker, along with a lot of common sense things that you probably already know about making any coffee including drip, but I'm going to throw those in as well, let me just say that this isn't one of those YouTube videos on the easiest or the cheapest or the fastest way to do anything. There are a few steps involved here that might include purchasing something or actually putting in about five seconds more effort than you're used to, but that's going to be the difference between a better cup of coffee and something that tastes like you angrily scooped a bunch of Costco ground coffee out of a two pound can and didn't care about anybody's feelings. So step one here is whole bean coffee. You need to grind the coffee before you make it. Now I'm sure a lot of people are ready to click off of this video already because you're like, screw that, I'm not buying a grinder. I am not going through the trouble of grinding the coffee. Let me tell you something though, from personal experience to actual coffee expert texts that I've read, the number one thing everybody says is the key to making a better cup of coffee is whole bean coffee. And the reason for that without going complete coffee nerd in this video is because a lot of the gases and compounds that make up the aromas and flavors of coffee are trapped in that bean. And within 15 minutes of grinding it, a lot of experts say that about 50% of the aromatics are already lost, and for those of you who don't know, taste and smell are connected. Much of the aromatic side of coffee is what makes up the flavor, obviously, and you get a lot more brightness and complexity out of the flavor of the coffee, and I'm talking any coffee, not some artisan special single origin coffee from down at the hipster shop. I mean literally any whole bean coffee that you're going to get, you're going to get a lot more flavor out of grinding it fresh than you will from getting a bag of ground coffee. So step one whole bean coffee. That leads right into step two, which is you need a grinder and not a blade grinder. There are videos on YouTube you can watch as to why not to use a blade grinder. Early on in this channel, you can actually find videos of me using a blade grinder. I just didn't have anything else at the time. And I was experienced enough using the blade grinder to get a decent enough grind with it. But no matter what, you cannot get a consistent grind size with a blade grinder. It is just not possible. And for those of you who are thinking, well, a burr grinder is expensive, so already I'm not a fan of this video and I don't want to do it. Unless you're looking for a grinder that does really powder fine stuff for uh, espresso, uh, really grinders aren't that much money. You can get a burr grinder like this one for, I think I paid like 60 bucks for it. And I'm sure you're thinking that's like three times more money than the drip coffee maker that's sitting next to it. You're right, but guess what? This isn't what's making the flavor of the coffee. Whole beans and this grinder are literally more important in the flavor of the coffee than the drip maker. And as an added bonus, if you ever decide to get more into coffee or even just want to try out other brew methods, you have to use different grind sizes for French press, for aero press, for stovetop espresso. All those different methods require different grind sizes. So if you ever decide to get into it, now you already have a grinder. So now we're about halfway there because if you use fresh whole bean coffee, you grind it fresh, you put it in your drip maker, you're already gonna get better coffee than that ground crap that you were shoveling in there before. But there are a couple other important tricks that you can use to get much better coffee out of your drip maker. One of the common sense side notes that I'll throw in here, but this is not one of the two extra tips, tricks, whatever you wanna call them, is make sure you are putting fresh filtered water into your coffee machine, especially if you live somewhere that has hard water because that really just leaves a lot of deposits and crap inside the coffee maker and on top of the fact that it will definitely negatively affect the flavor of the coffee, it kind of just clogs up and screws up the whole coffee maker eventually anyway. So filtered, cold, clean water, that's what you want to use. And let's get back to what I was just talking about, which is the next tip, which is permanent mesh filter. And I know a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking, oh, here we go again, something else I have to purchase. This will actually save you money. 
I've used this, no exaggeration, hundreds of times in place of a paper filter. And you have the added bonus for those of you who are big on environmental issues and waste and trash and stuff like that of it's 100% reusable and you don't have to use paper filters anymore, but that is actually not why I am recommending that you use a mesh filter. The reason why this is a really important tip for getting better coffee out of a drip maker is because paper filters actually hold back a lot of the oils that hold the flavors and complexity in the coffee. A lot of that flavor is in those oils and the paper doesn't allow those oils to go through. So the tiny gaps in the mesh filters, they still don't let the grinds through, but it lets a lot more of that oil through, which is gonna give you a much better and much more complex cup of coffee even out of a drip maker. So this is a very cheap upgrade and they're basically standard general size. They'll go in any drip maker like this one and it is definitely a big improvement for getting better coffee. But we are not done yet. So let me put this back in here and let's actually grind up this coffee. And then we'll get to the final tip that I have for you, uh, which is something that I don't think many people have actually thought to ever do because it seems like a step that really nobody would take with a drip maker, but you might find this one interesting. Now as another side note for you, but this is not part of the uh, tips and tricks in this video, uh, you should actually also at some point invest in a scale, a gram scale, because believe it or not, coffee beans don't all have the same weight. There are different densities to different types of coffee, so if you ever want to get really specific as to the ratio of coffee to water, uh, you really do need a gram scale so you can get the right ratio because four scoops of beans of one coffee is not gonna be the same weight or density as the next sometimes. So a gram scale is a good idea. Again, not one of the uh, tips that I'm offering in this video, just kind of like a side note for those of you who wanna get a little bit deeper into it. So now you have your coffee ground up, you put it in your mesh filter. Okay. So now we turn it on. Of course, that's not where it ends. There is one more trick that I have for you. Uh, you are going to need a stick of some kind. Some of you probably see where I'm going with this. I'm actually gonna show you on camera uh, how this makes a difference. And don't use a fork or a butter knife or something like that. You don't wanna destroy the mesh filter. You want something softer like uh, this is a bamboo chopstick, something like that. But as many of you probably know, if you've ever opened up a drip maker while it's making coffee, it kind of just dribbles a little bit of pumped hot water into the grounds kind of somewhere in the center and you never really get a full saturation which is very important for getting the flavors out of a coffee and this is where this last tip comes in i put four cups of water in here uh, most anybody who has a drip maker has a little level on the side that will show you how much water is in there what you want to do is wait till it gets to halfway so let's say you put eight cups in there wait till it gets to four if you put six wait till it gets to three whatever the case may be around the halfway mark that's when you wanna do this last step. So you open the top of your drip maker, and you can see there, like I said, it's kind of just dropping the water right here. You take your stir, and you give the coffee a quick stir. And you don't have to keep coming back in here and doing this, just do it this one time. And you'll see there we have a kind of nice frothiness going, and we have everything nice and saturated. And that's it. You leave it, you close the top, and you let it finish doing what it's doing. And that's literally it for that last step. You stir it for a few seconds just to make sure that you have the water in all of that ground coffee. This way it's fully saturated and you are extracting all the flavors out of there. And because you ground the coffee fresh from whole beans and you're using a mesh filter that's letting the oils through, getting that coffee fully saturated that way is really gonna extract a maximum amount of flavors, at least as much as you can with a drip coffee maker. And this is a method that I have used uh, many, many times, especially, like I said, when I'm trying to make coffee for three, four, or five people and I don't really feel like sitting here with a French press making individual cups of coffee. Uh, that's the way I do it, and the coffee comes out really, really... Well, I'm surprised, actually, at how well it comes out uh, using these methods. And it seems like that's a lot of stuff to go through for drip coffee, uh, but it is something that I don't even think about at this point when I'm doing it. As long as you already have this, you have it set to the grind size you want, it's just a matter of picking your coffee, throwing it in the grinder, putting it in your mesh filter, and then honestly, you really only have one extra step, which is somewhere in the middle of the drip brewing process. Take a stick and stir the grinds a little bit. And believe me, I'm telling you, you are going to see and taste a sizable difference 
in the quality of the coffee that you get out of a standard cheap drip coffee maker. Excellent, excellent. So hopefully this was helpful for some of you, especially those of you who, like I said, are happy with your drip maker and really don't want to learn other brewing processes. Or for those of you who want to make 12 cups of coffee and you want them to be better cups of coffee without having to make individual servings with an AeroPress or a French press. It's definitely a set of tricks that has worked wonderfully for me and hopefully it'll work for you as well. Uh, definitely give this method a shot and leave your comments down below and let me know what you thought and if you got a better cup of coffee out of this. Now the only one small thing you are going to want to keep in mind is that you do have to get the grind size right when you get a burr grinder or else the coffee is going to come out too light or it's going to come out dark and sludgy and have a lot of kind of sediment in it. You do have to get the grind size right. That's basically another video. That's why I didn't go into detail about that here. But once you have that down, this should really make all the difference. If you have any tips or tricks as to how you get more out of your drip coffee maker, I'm definitely excited to hear about that as well. So you can leave that down in the comments if you guys want to discuss what you do with your drip maker to get better coffee. And again, for all you coffee snobs that are angry that I even made this video, keep in mind that not everybody is that serious about coffee. They just want to drink it. Some people don't have the time to get into all the nerdy aspects of coffee. So there's nothing wrong with getting a better cup of coffee out of a machine that you have in your house already. If you like this channel and you want to see a lot more videos like this, uh, my Patreon page is down at the top of the video description. If you want to sign up over there, you get one week early access to all my videos, including all my 90 second coffee reviews, and I'll see you all next time.